welcome to Mount Holyoke. My name is Sal. I'm a senior and an environmental studies major. And I'm Annie. I'm a junior economics major and Chinese minor. And we're going to take you on a tour of campus today. Mount Holyoke was founded in 1837 by a chemist named Mary Lyon. It was the first of the Seven Sisters Colleges to be founded. About 2,200 students go to Mount Holyoke, but in the five college consortium, Pioneer Valley, there are over 30,000 college students. We have a bus system called the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. It's free for all students. There are four bus stops on campus, and it comes every 30 minutes, so you can take it to the other colleges in the consortium. We are about to start the next section of our tour by going into Dwight Hall, nicknamed our Center of Centers. Here we have the McCulloch Center for Global Initiatives for Study Abroad, the Miller Worley Center of the Environment for Sustainability Initiatives, and the Wiseman Center for Leadership to foster student leadership on and off campus. Let's go take a look. We're here now inside Dwight Hall. This is the McCulloch Center for Global Initiatives, our office for study abroad. We have over 150 approved study abroad programs in about 50 countries. You can also do research and internships abroad. This is also our office for international students to have help with visas or any questions they might have. Upstairs, we have the Miller Worley Center for the Environment, our office for sustainability initiatives on campus. We also have Project Stream, one of the only field research opportunities on a college campus. Also upstairs, we have the Wiseman Center for Leadership, where we have programs that involve students with the local community called community-based learning programs. We also bring in speakers to help foster leadership with students. Next, we're going to be looking at the Mediated Educational Workspace. We're standing now in the Muse, which is our Mediated Educational Workspace. There's two great resources for students in here. The first is the Speaking, Arguing, and Writing Center. So that's an entirely student-staffed center. Um, all students who work there take a semester-long course learning about peer review. Uh, and then, as a student here, you're able to take a paper or a presentation to them at any point in the process and get feedback before you ever hand it in for a grade. Um, so that's a great way to get a peer resource and to get peer edits on your papers. The other uh, resource for students in here is the media teaching area. So if you had to work on a project uh, in a program you'd never used before, something like make a movie, you could go to them and they'll help you both work on your project as well as learn literacy in that computer program. So we are now officially in our library. This is the Information Commons. A great resource for students in here is the Technology Help Desk. Um, so if you sense there was something wrong with your computer, maybe a virus, you could take it to them and they'll look at it totally free. We are 50-50 Mac PC, so you can take either of those things to them. I knew someone who spilled an entire juice box on their laptop and it's fine now, um, so that's a great resource. Another thing in here is the Puzzle and Coloring Room. If you were stressed out during finals, wanted to take a break, um, you can go in there, do a puzzle, do a coloring page, uh, and just kind of take a de-stress moment. So we're standing now in our Alumni Hall of Fame. On the walls, we have some noted alum of the college. One of my personal favorites is Frances Perkins. She was the first woman in the presidential cabinet. We have alums all over the world. Um, our alum network is incredibly robust. Um, I've also literally had an alum hand me a business card and say, if you need a job, get in contact with me. So Mount Holyoke alums really want to see students succeed, um, and we want to see each other in the world. Now we're standing in the reading room. This was designed after Westminster Hall. Students love to study here, um, but I think it's a great place to get distracted because students are in and out all the time, uh, going to different parts of the library. Up in the windows, we have the seal of Mount Holyoke College. We also have the seals of the five colleges, seven sister schools, and some of our daughter schools, which were schools that were founded by Mount Holyoke alum. We're standing at the top of the stairs, so I want to take a second to talk about our first Mount Holyoke tradition. If you look around the room, you'll see banners that have a color and a mascot. Each class year when they come in is assigned a color and a mascot, and you'll keep that all four years. My class color is the Blue Lions, and we like to go up and down the staircase that corresponds with your class color. Um, we have a superstition that if you don't, you will fail all of your finals. I don't know if it's true, but I am going to go that way, and I'll meet you at the bottom. We're standing now in the library atrium uh, next to our Dale Chihuly statue, which was donated by the Centennial Class of 1937. It sits atop a 16th century Venetian well with a transcription on the side that roughly translates to, those who are thirsty may come and drink freely, speaking to our access to knowledge here at Mount Holyoke and in the library. But if you were really thirsty, you could pop into the Francis Perk for a drink. 
Francis Perk is our library cafe, um, and it is a student-run space, so they are always bringing new things in based on student feedback. We have coffee, uh, fresh-baked pastries every day, and with student feedback, they just brought bubble tea into that space as well. So they always want to hear what students want to have, um, and then they're bringing that in for us. The other thing I like to point out is the circulation desk. So here in the Mount Holyoke Library, you have access to the 29,000 volumes in our library. We are also a part of the five college interlibrary loan, which gives you access to the nine million volumes throughout the five colleges. There's a van that drives to all of the colleges, so if you check a book out online, it'll be here within two days. So the next stop on our campus tour is Kendade Hall, which is our science center here at Mount Holyoke. Um, before we head there, I'll give you a brief overview of academics. So we have 48 majors, and we also have the option to self-design if you have a couple of different interests and want to combine them. Um, we have a couple of distribution requirements as well, but they're really easy to knock out your first year. It gives you a little bit of structure once you get here. Uh, things like a math and science or humanities requirement that might even get you out of your comfort zone and into something that you love on campus. Classes are pretty small, so we have a 9 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Most of the classes that I've been in have been around 20 students. I've been in classes as small as 7. And we also have the opportunity with the Five College Consortium and the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, which is 10 times our size, um, to kind of experience some of those big lecture halls as well. So now we're at Kendade, which is mainly a science building. Um, so you'll see elements of science, like this periodic table on the ground right here. So Mount Holyoke does have an honor code and it's taken really seriously, but it affords Mount Holyoke students with a lot of really great responsibilities, one of which is self-scheduled exams. So at the end of every semester, you'll have two or three reading days. There'll be no exams, no classes, so you can just study or not study, whatever you wanna do. Then after that, there'll be five exam days. During those five days, you can go pick up whichever exam you wanna take at whatever time, go take it and bring it back. It's really great because if you didn't study during reading days, you can take your exams towards the end of the exam period. If you want to go home early, you can take them at the beginning or spread them out however you want to. So now we're in Kendade. You'll see some elements of science in this building. So on the ground right here, we have a neuron. The staircase is a DNA helix. And then the rugs down in the atrium are amoebas. Now let's go take a look at some labs. So one of the really cool things about Mount Holyoke is that it's really easy to begin doing research from your very first year on campus. So the posters that you'll see on the walls right here are all student and professor collaborated research. A lot of times we think about research of being in STEM, um, but I actually have friends who have done research in every discipline here at Mount Holyoke. So I have a friend who did research in the religion department for the past three years. I'm an economics major and I did research in the economics department last semester. Um, so no matter what you decide to major in, uh, you can always do research here at Mount Holyoke. So at Mount Holyoke, we have something called link funding. Um, so every student, regardless of financial aid, is guaranteed funding to do an unpaid or low paid research or internship over the summer. It's really nice because it gives students the opportunity to participate in research or internships that they might otherwise not have been able to do without the funding. Right now, we're standing by the Botanical Gardens. And right by the Botanical Gardens is the campus greenhouse. Every spring we have the Spring Flower Show, which is always curated by students here on campus. So it's really nice to go to the Spring Flower Show and see what other students here are working on. Um, another thing we do um, it, within the greenhouse is that every first year gets a first year plant. Um, and a superstition we have with the first year plants is that if you keep your plant alive for all four years, you'll become a millionaire. Right over here is the Career Development Center, and that's where a lot of students can go to create or revise um, their resumes as many times as they need. Um, the Career Development Center also offers a lot of GRE and LSATs um, books and classes. Um, something about the Career Development Center is that alumni have access to their resources up to five years after they graduate. Um, so if they decide that they want to make a career change or if they decide that they want to go to grad school, the resources offered within the Career Development Center is readily available to them. Um, another thing back here is the Student Health Center. So if any student is feeling ill or they need to take some medicine, they can go right over there um, and take whatever they need. Um, they also offer jobs for any students who are interested in pre-health or pre-med. Um, another building back there is the campus police station. The campus police station is open 24 hours, seven days a week, um, which makes this campus a really safe environment. However, the only time I ever have to call campus police is when I'm locked out of my room because Mount Holyoke has always been a safe community.
right now we're standing by the Elliott House, which is the house for spiritual and religious life. Within the Elliott House is a Japanese tea garden, um, various prayer spaces, a living room, as well as a kitchen. The Elliott House is one of the seven cultural centers offered on campus. All of the cultural centers are houses, so they all have their own kitchens and living rooms and computer labs. Um, they all house the different cultural orgs on campus who host events for our students to come and learn about the different cultures um, and people that we're all learning and living with. Right now we're standing by the Amp Theater and we host events at the Amp Theater um, throughout the year. So we sometimes do movie nights and there's also a spring festival and we also do two traditions at the Amp Theater. One of the traditions is that we watch Dirty Dancing with the first years because there's a line in the movie that says baby's going to Mount Holyoke in the fall and we all scream so you can never hear the line. And another tradition we have at the Amp Theater is convocation and that's where everyone dresses up in their class colors and we scream some more to celebrate the graduating class as well as the first year class. Welcome to Blanchard Community Center, our hub for student and social life on campus. Here students like to gather, to hang out with friends, do a little homework and generally relax. This is our Kokiri Pub and Cafe. Here you can use your dining dollars to get food and enjoy that meal with friends in a space outside of the dining commons. Over here we have the grab and go station where you can use a meal swipe and this is for students who might not have time to sit down and have a full meal. They can just take some food out and eat it in between classes. Next we'll be taking a look into our dining commons. We're standing now outside of our community dining commons. The dining commons was opened in January of 2018. Our dining commons is green restaurant certified. Um, so there are lots of sustainability measures going on in there. Uh, for one, we have no bottles in this facility and less to go options. So we've been able to reduce our waste. All of the uneaten food uh, is composted. So we have been able to reduce our food waste that way. Um, in the dining commons, we've also been connecting with local sustainable food sources. So right now, 20% of our food uh, is local and sustainable. What that means for us is sometimes we go in and there's a sticker on our food that says farm fresh um, and you know that it was grown locally so we've had carrots grown in Granby, we have mushrooms that were grown in Hadley um, and we also have local Maple Valley Creamery ice cream so there's lots of really good local food in our dining commons as well. The dining commons is buffet style dining so once you swipe in you can eat as much food as you can handle pretty much. There's lots of different stations and a ton of different options. We have things like classics, the grill, global, the wok, we also have some customizable stations, so there's a make your own stir fry, um, there's a made to order sandwich station, egg station, and sushi station. So there's lots of really good things to eat in here. Hi, I'm Sabrina. I'm a sophomore here at Mount Holyoke, and today I'm gonna take you on a tour of Pearson's, one of our residence halls. So let's go take a look inside. So this is Pearson's main common room. Pearson's was built in 1897. The founder of the school, Mary Lyon, said that you needed three things to make a residence hall feel like home, and that was a grandfather clock, a piano, and a fireplace. Here we have our dining room. As you can see, we also have available computers for students to use whenever they need them. Um, each building also has a TV room and usually a kitchenette as well. So this is the sunroom. This is another popular place to hang out and do homework with your friends, catch some sun while it's nice outside. This is one of our average rooms. It comes equipped with all of the things that you see here. You get a dresser, a bookshelf, a desk, a bed, and usually a nice big walk-in closet like this one. So usually your first year you would have a roommate or maybe two, which is a great way to make a new friend. But after that, you're entered in a housing lottery so that you get to choose your own room and who you want your roommates to be. So that is a really fun part about residential life is that you get to choose your own experience and choose how you wanna live with your friends and where you wanna be on campus because every residence hall is different and you get to choose what fits you the best. That concludes our tour. If you're looking for more information, check out some of our other videos online 